It's Monday of Holy Week, and Jesus leaves Bethany to go back into Jerusalem. Matthew 21, 12, and 13 says that Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. He turned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it to a den of robbers. See, Jesus enters Jerusalem, goes straight to the temple and cleanses the temple. And here's why he does it. Because the temple had lost its intention. The temple was no longer being used the way it was made for. And there's a lot we could say here, but the actions within the temple revealed really simply that those in the temple had lost their first love. The temple was the heart of Jerusalem. And where does Jesus go? He goes straight to the heart. On this Monday of Holy Week, we have the opportunity to go straight to the heart of who we are and ask, is there anything I love more than Jesus? Maybe you could ask like this, what does my time, my money, what does that reveal about the condition of my heart? What would those things say are my first to love? Is there any paycheck, any title, any role, any relationship, any expectation, any habit that I'm willing to place at the heart of who I am in place of Jesus? On the final week of Jesus's life, he enters the temple and he's not looking at the amount of work anyone puts in. He isn't calculating who's giving the most. He's not seeing who the best teachers are or who's at the temple the most. Jesus is after the heart of that place that this place would exemplify everything that it was made for, and he wants the same for you and I. Scripture says our bodies are living temples, and I just wanna remind us, he's not after our productivity or our paychecks or our gifts. Those are good things to give to the Lord, but those are all secondary to what he's really going after. Jesus is going after our heart because everything in this life flows out of that. Give Jesus your heart and yeah, he may clear some things out. He's gonna overturn some stuff you've hold, held on to, but it's because he wants your life to exemplify everything you were made for. He wants us to go back to our first love. I heard a pastor say this week about the slow fade of the heart. He said, we rarely intentionally ask for a sinful life, for a divided heart. Instead, we make small decisions every day that form who we are becoming and who has our heart. Until one day we look up and something we swore we'd never do is something we've grown comfortable and casual with. And here we find Jesus in the heart of a temple that was once dedicated wholly to him, and it's lost its intention. So what does Jesus do? Jesus drastically shakes the heart of that place. Jesus wakes them up and calls them to something more. And listen, on this Monday, he wants the same for you and I. He will go to intense, even drastic lengths to show our drifting heart that this temple, this temple, it was made for more. More than beginning the day walking through and ending every day bowing to a screen. Jesus wants more for you to just be a exhausted stay-at-home dad or mom waiting for the next nap time, waiting to put them down for bedtime. He wants more for you than having a house that's perfectly put together, but you're completely undone. Jesus wants more for you than a full bank account, but an empty purpose. He wants more for you than a nine to five that helps you get by, but you don't really have any intentionality or focus or even joy in your life. Jesus has come to give us life and life to the full. And the cleansing of the temple reminds us that in order to experience the fullness of God, it begins with the emptying of everything that's stealing our heart. See, on this Monday of Holy Week, we just invite you to wake up from your casual sin. Wake up from the slow drift of a distracted and divided heart and life and be stirred just like that city was when he came in for a Messiah that has come to bring you something better.